Hello you, it's me. Today we're going to talk about Hummingbird Salamander, which is the latest novel from Jeff Vandermeer, one of my favourite authors. I heard about this last year, so I've been waiting for it pretty much since it was announced. I'm pretty mad that the US gets Vandermeer releases before the UK does. I think that's pretty unfair. I really did struggle to get my thoughts on paper for this one. I read this about two weeks ago. I've kind of just been sitting on it. This is not an easy book to sum up. There will be plot review. I'll make sure if there are any spoiler bits, I'll mark them on the time bar. This book follows a woman who works in a high up position in a security firm. One day on the way to work, she's given an envelope by a stranger, which out of curiosity, she opens and follows the directions inside to a storage container, which is completely empty, aside from a note on a chair next to a tiny taxidermy hummingbird. And the note reads, Hummingbird Salamander. She uses her resources at the firm she works at to investigate and gets drawn into a plot revolving around endangered species trafficking, eco-terrorism, murder, and the estranged daughter of an Argentine industrialist. It totally takes over her life. She forsakes everything else to follow this quest, for which she was apparently selected to its conclusion. What's the purpose for which she's intended, and why her? This is a very different read to anything else I've read so far by Vandermeer. It's much less surreal, much less out there, more rooted in the real world and addressing real world concerns. If you follow Vandermeer on Twitter or on any kind of social media, you'll know that he is huge into ecology, conservation, and I think that's something that really shines through in this. The main character is anonymous. You don't get a name for them for the entire book. She uses replacement names for people, replacement names for places, and this would make the book feel very distant with your inability to sort of place it, to visualise what's going on. But with the very first chapter of the book being written in second person, with the narrator directly addressing you, putting you in her place in the story, it has the weird but really amazing effect of making the rest of the book feel very personal. Like this could happen to anybody, this could happen to me. Until that feeling is very cleverly and intentionally dispelled. The setting of the book is weird, and it kind of lends to the feel of it being a cautionary tale. It speaks about conflict, about environmental disasters, about pandemics, which especially now may feel like they're just around the corner on the horizon. So this is set in the close future. However, because this was Vandermeer, I was constantly on the edge of my seat, waiting for the bass to drop, for the trademark Vandermeer weird to seep into the story. And it really never comes, especially when they're at a certain place and he mentions the, the phrase holding ponds. I was immediately like, born? But sadly not. Saying that though, this book does have a kind of weird quality in my head. The character gets a clue, goes on a quest to find another person, a mysterious animal, an almost mythical animal, is beset from all sides by these mysterious figures and factions trying to stop her. It almost felt like a fantasy adventure with all the fantasy elements removed, which was very strange. This was lent to even more by the fact that she nicknamed all the inanimate objects that she took along with her, like a bag called Shovel Pig or a phone called Bog. Almost like they're her party or her friends or her animal companions. I don't know if I'm describing it very well, but fantasy without fantasy is kind of where this one sits for me. You're given information very slowly in drips. And it's really a long time before you can distinguish between what is trivial information and what is not, which I really liked. If you like everything explained clearly and quickly, this is not the book for you. Also, if you want another Southern Reach trilogy, this is not the book for you. I think if you like M. John Harrison, however, this is the book for you. Honestly, for 90% of it, I think you have to go with the attitude of taking in the story, enjoying the scenery, as the journey of the main character before things are laid out and you start to actually piece together what's going on. While the main story is going on and you're trying to piece everything together, it's overshadowed by how the main character turns what is meant to be a journey to a goal intended by the person that left the clues into a journey of obsession with the woman who sent her on that journey. She almost deifies the mysterious Sylvina in her head. So the reason you want to get to the end and the reason that the main character want to get to the end are very different as one of her worlds completely falls apart and another weird shady underground one comes more and more into view, drawing her in. 
this book reads like a slow motion panic attack. It is honestly pretty stressful to read at times, in a good way. I think one of the most interesting things about this book is the main character. Firstly, it's great to read a book about a wife and a mother who is not defined by those qualities. Those seem almost trivial sideline things compared to who she is as a person, and people really don't write like that when they have to tie having a family into the plot. It's also super interesting that the main character is so horrible. She's super unlikable, you're not meant to get on with her. She's an asshole, 100%. She's unhappy with her life, she's bitter, she's violent and rude, a serial cheater. She ignores her daughter, she is not a good person. In my head I was trying to weigh up whether her starting on this journey was a case of her going with the flow because she's gotten into this sort of routine of just doing whatever comes her way in her everyday life or whether she was so desperate for any kind of excitement in her mundane life that this is an attempt to break out of that cycle. I think that's an interesting thing to think about. What would have to be offered to you to leave everything else behind? Where are people's lines? Besides the cautionary tale of the setting, it's quite unclear to me what the message of this book is outside of humans are doing everything they can to sort of damage the environment, they're tearing the world apart, and all this environmental decay that's going on around us. Maybe that extremism is needed to match extremism, or maybe that extremism is not the answer, and the whole answer to human wrought catastrophe is finding balance. This is a hard book to unravel, and honestly, while it's really good still, it's the least good Vandermeer novel I've read. I thought it would be a much more emotional ride, having built the main character up so much. I think one thing that really does this book in, weirdly, is the blurb. I think it kind of hyped the book up to be something it wasn't. But, as this book may not have been something I was looking for personally, it's still a very interesting read, especially if you like environmentalism, ecology, if you have a mindset for conservation. As with all of Vandermeer's work, it's beautiful to read. Prose is where he really shines. There are a lot of gorgeous quotes in here. Every line, in and out of context, is poetry, as usual. So I'm going to give this book three stars. Thanks for tuning in for this review. Don't forget to follow me on Goodreads and Twitter, which I'll link down below. Don't forget to follow our Interstellar Sci-Fi Book Club, which I'll also link down below. I'm also on Readerly now. My at is Max. So thank you, and I'll see you next time for the next review. Bye.